This is KCIM News with News Director Nathan Combs. Thank you very much, John, and good morning, everyone. A switchgear fire on a ground transformer caused power outages for 576 customers on Monday in Carroll. That component fire began just shortly before noon on an electrical unit located on Highway 30 East nearby Collins Aerospace. The outage affected customers in the area for approximately 15 minutes, and all but two customers had their power fully restored uh, relatively quickly. The remaining businesses without power took several hours to restore as many American crews did have to dismantle the damaged transformer, replace and install new equipment before restoring power. Uh, And again, as John and I mentioned a moment ago, if you saw any images of how absolutely toasted that transformer was, pretty impressive at how quickly they got everything back up and running. Looking elsewhere, Governor Kim Reynolds says she will send another group of state law enforcement agents and Iowa National Guard soldiers to the U.S.-Mexico border, but she's waiting to coordinate the timing with Texas officials. 25 governors have said they're going to stand with Governor Abbott and do what this president refuses to do. Reynolds will use federal pandemic relief funds to finance the mission. Reynolds was among a dozen Republican governors who were in Texas on Sunday in support of Governor Greg Abbott's actions at the border. The reality is we don't know who's entering our country, but we know what they're capable of. It's why Governor Abbott has stepped up to defend his state, his people, and truly our nation. For three years, Texas has been on the front line of the most serious national security and humanitarian crisis of our time. In 2021, Reynolds did send a group of state troopers and investigators to assist Texas officials at the border for two weeks. Last year, the governor deployed 109 Iowa National Guard soldiers and 31 state law enforcement officials to Texas for a month. Reynolds does not expect the bipartisan plan developed by U.S. Senate negotiators to toughen immigration rules uh, that she has no uh, int- belief that that will pass. She says President Biden already has the authority to act. We don't need a new law. He needs to follow the existing law. He is not denying illegal entry into the country. Reynolds says two Chinese nationals were arrested in rural Iowa last week in connection with what investigators describe as a $30 million nationwide fraud case. One of the individuals charged is believed to have entered the U.S. illegally through the southern border months before his arrest. Reynolds says 26 of the state's drug investigations last year were linked to Mexican drug cartels. Carroll County Growth Partnership has announced the Economic Recovery Corps Fellow partnered with Carroll's Hub 712. That ERC fellowship launched in 2023 with a $30 million cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Commerce's Economic Development Administration and connects diverse practitioners with host sites to address critical projects for economic recovery. More than 500 communities and projects submitted applications, and CCGP was one of only 65 to be selected for participation. The ERC projects spend various aspects of economic development, including workforce development, entrepreneurial ecosystem building, housing, child care, climate resiliency, broadband, as well as access to capital. CCGP has been paired with Jennifer Linguis Otto, a current Carroll resident. The 25-year-old is is a second-generation American and brings a wealth of experience from her banking career and community involvement. The Hub 712 initiative, located on the new Wynn Innovation Center alongside uh, Highway 30 in Carroll, serves as a business resource lab and co-working space supporting entrepreneurship-led economic development. The ERC Fellowship, spanning two and a half years, will see Languizado working alongside community and business leaders, fostering relationships, and coordinating local efforts. Languizado says, I'm both honored and grateful for this opportunity to serve West Central Iowa by coming together and working collaboratively. It's vital to hear each perspective and story and adopt a forward-leaning culture. This will allow more barriers to be broken for all and truly strengthen our region's competitive potential. CCGP Executive Director Kimberly Tiefenthaler says, this truly is a game changer for our Hub 712 project. To have someone solely focused for the next two and a half years on the Hub 712 initiative, launching the physical space, and pushing out partner resources from across the state is just what we need. We're excited to welcome Jennifer and begin the onboarding process. Languisado will officially begin a role with the CCGP and Hub 712 later this month. The ERC program seeks to accelerate recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic in distressed communities across the U.S. by fostering economic resilience and transformative change. And just a quick note, flags were ordered to half staff today following the death of former Iowa Secretary of Agriculture, Bill Northey. Northey also served under the Trump administration 
as the undersecretary for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So flags will be flown at half staff throughout the state uh, for the next several days uh, in recognition of Northeast Public Service. But that is going to be wrapping up your KCIM 6 o'clock news. I'm Nathan Cohen's reporting. Yeah, it'll be fun to catch up with uh, Kimberly Tiefenthaler and Aaron Quaker tomorrow. We'll be talking about that report and a lot more about Hub 712 and that exciting announcement. Yeah, it's probably going to be a a longer interview than we're used to, just because there's so much we want to talk about. So we knew that that uh, fellowship announcement was going to be made this week. uh, So that's kind of how we scheduled things out to land that way. Of course, the Chamber Banquet is coming up on Thursday. Uh, and that's always an exciting time for the the Carroll Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and really looking at that downtown assessment, it's 41 pages. If you haven't had a chance to look at it, by the way, it's available online, City of Carroll's website. We mm-hmm. have it on our website as well. Uh, it's an interesting read. Not a whole lot has changed from that initial report, but it kind of outlines some things uh, that are in need of improvement, I guess is how you could phrase that. Uh, then also outlines some ideas on what you could do to make it better. So uh, really now that they've got that report in hand, it's kind of on to the next step. You know what comes next? Yeah, what do I? What are the priorities? What are they going to do uh, in what order? Maybe what are they going to try to tackle there? So it'll be a lot of fun, and yeah, it will be a long interview because mainly I don't just don't I don't stop talking. <laughs> that's, that's my problem. I, I think when you get pe- when you get people <laughs> excited about a thing, they want to talk about it. So, and then it's also interesting to listen to people excited about a thing they're talking about talk about that thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, and we get paid to talk, so we're okay go. at it sometimes. We're, we're pretty decent at killing time, like now. <laughs> Like, like this segment is running way, way over time. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the time. Bye. All right. Thanks, Nathan. We're going we're gonna to stop it here. So uh, thanks for Nathan's discipline of stopping talking. I'm going to move on to the weather forecast here coming up in just a moment.